Audio Frontier. Ladies and gentlemen, the following podcast is Wrestling Death and is scheduled for one hour. Maybe more. It has no real time limits making their way into your ears. First, from a place called Garniston, he is the Pyramid. It's going to be the funniest show ever because I'm all about the comedy and the money, money. baby. Much you can pay. And his partner, Fela Tapender Stevenson. From Mexico City to Beef Community Centre, I've got stories that are going to blow your mind. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Wrestling Daft, the world's greatest wrestling podcast, the most downloaded wrestling podcast on the planet, the most high budget wrestling podcast on the planet and high budget is what allows me to sit alongside one of the greatest wrestlers uh, the world has ever seen and definitely the most significant modern wrestler of the modern era in the UK It is Grado. Hello, how are we, how's things? You, you really need to have a more upbeat um, and kind of more powerful response after I've gave you that build up. No, that's you know what, what you do. It's, it's like going that's... Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then he's like, "All right, how are you doing?" But that makes him cool. No, it doesn't, mate. I, it does. That makes me cool. If I go, "Oh, that's great," blah, blah, blah. Right, if, what does no. your hat say on it? D squared Canada or something like that. D D squared Canada. Aye. What does that mean? I don't, well, it's a kind of mate that or it's a mate or a kind of. Is that a trendy thing? Not that weird. It's my buddy got me. Is that a fashionable thing? Aye, aye. Young team. Young team. I forget aye. you're much younger than me. What age are you again? Well, I'm 32, but even with this bonnet on, I feel as if I'm kind of mutton dress as lamb a wee bit. I'm kind of... Look, they big trainers. I mean, I bought the big trainers last year. That they're all jumping about in. Aye. And I fucking wore them. I've worn them twice, man. Just See the big... on every time. Oh, mate. I don't know where I got them. I don't know where I got them. Well... Bad boys. They're absolute let me bad boys, this. but... As you're a member of the young team, right, Gredo? Let me say this. I have uh, found out there's a big announcement here uh, on Wrestling Daft that I am getting my COVID vaccine on the 30th of March. Oh. Uh, I'm getting vaccinated. So I might be the first one of the team to get vaccinated. Would that be right? Yeah. So how, what underlying illness have you got? You're a bit young. You can't be that old. Well, I'm 43. Is that right? I mean, I know you're 43, but is that what they're doing to you, John? You'll be fucking getting the next one, you know? I will be, actually. I am 40, so I Wow. Uh, but I think it depends where you live as well, obviously. Um, I live. I'm in Argyll and Butte, so I'm no, like, you know, this, that's the health board I'm under. So I think it depends the health board you're in and stuff like that, how it goes. You'll be fucking waiting forever, Gredo. I will. Because I'm thinking, immune again. anyway. You've probably caught it about fucking five times by now. Mate, I, listen, I'm just... Listen, I'm not saying that I want coronavirus right it's a horrible thing but i wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind ugh, how do i say this you know get, coming in contact with somebody and then you need to stay in the house for two weeks and get, aye, aye, aye. get off your work i mean i don't i would want i don't want it i think it's terrible but do you know what i mean before i get vaccinated i wouldn't mind that we two another two weeks stint in the do you, house do you hate the morning show that much no no it's not that it's just <laughs> It is, but today, this show, you can just stay in your house. The only thing you're going out your house today, work-wise, is the, the breakfast show that you do. So you're saying you would rather catch a potentially fatal illness than go into your work? <laughs> no, no, you're just not, no, you're just, say the subject. Um... <laughs> right, here, a big thanks to Emma Louise, by the way, who drew a picture of your favourite podcast, uh, that is Wrestling Daft, by the way, and you can check that out if you look at the video version wow. of the show, because John is going to put it up on the screen right now and see his face and it's it's a beautiful picture of me and Gredo when we were in our physical prime before covid hit uh brian says that's a great picture that's um, great i love Emma it Louise. well done man that's a cracker brian it's a cracker it's a way to tear them brian says <laughs> that's an old brian, story that's a crack. he was great wasn't he frank carlson man he here's a great. cracker it's a really it's a way to tear them <laughs> oh, by the way, I know we can't even talk about the news, but I think we know what we're talking about when we say our favourite TV well, presenter. I know we probably can't talk about it, we can't touch on it. Right, hold on. Because of the legal pause. proceedings. Just pause with it, our favourite TV presenter. 
right? Your dragon try to drag us in here. It's your favorite TV presenter. I'm the one fucking called up to the witness stand. It's your favorite TV presenter. Here's the, the thing. We're talking about a TV presenter who Grado's a fan of. If you're a, a regular listener of the show, you'll know who this is. You can mention his name as long as you don't. No, I'm not. Listen, no, I've no, already no. said about COVID. I'm not. I could. I, I, I could end up being cancelled for this episode. Right, okay, so just, well, I'll, no, I'll no, no, no. Okay. No, you don't. You say it, John. Don't anybody say it. Let's keep it. Hang me. He it was a quiz show um, presenter. Uh, he was a, an all round entertainer, comedian um, who has kind of fallen out of the public eye a wee bit and has had a lot of kind of direct message conversations and private conversations with Grado. Um, and my concern would be the new, if I was you, Grado, that with this, obviously, like a court case coming up, and that's all why we can't talk about it, because an arrest has been made relating to a thing. Uh, you know, they go through everybody's DMs, not private <laughs> messages. So you, know, you need to get your story straight, mate, about these recipes and all that, because a polis is going to look at a recipe and be like, this is code for something. That's... <laughs> That's all I'm saying. This is code. What recipes did they send you again? Sausage casserole. I mean, for fuck's that sake. That is definite code. That's code. That's code. Anyway, Brian wants me to say, Grado, let your brother know that Big Show's on the Jericho podcast and see if your brother will listen and get some thoughts on that. It's a great listen, he says. He's, right. That's Brian's put over for the week. You'll get 20 my, minutes. My, my brother did send us another message, by the way. Um, Was that about the Big Show, specifically? I don't know if it was about the big show or wrestling. See, he sent three. That did how many did like you see that night? Remember when it when I, I think said, we only had two. I think we only had two about the big show. Yeah, Aye. Was, hold on, we said that was the big show's debut in AEW. I was trying to tell him about the big show, and he says, "Why are you telling me this? I couldn't give a fuck. You go and suck fucking lab Florence's pecker for all I care. <laughs> lab Florence. Lab Florence. <laughs> big lab." <laughs> There you go. I'd just like to clarify, just you know, because Grado might be under investigation soon and they may suck in anybody's pick up. The other one was a plant of mine one. We heard that, didn't we? I? Yeah. Aye, aye, we heard that. We heard that. But, you know, keep hassling him. Bringer of content on the show, Karate Warrior 2, says Grado needs to cut a version of that Tony Khan promo on the show. And just in case you haven't heard it, let's, let's play this. Kenny, that was absolute crap. I never wanted to be in this position. I never wanted to be here, but you made a promise. You already went back in a gentleman's agreement once. You made a promise to him. You said you were going to give him a match. That was BS. He had just gone through two matches, and you can't even promise people matches. I make the matches, and I'm going to tell you right now, Kenny, nine days from tonight, you have time to get ready, man. Nine days from tonight, you have to wrestle in nine days from tonight on Dynamite, live on Dynamite, live on Dynamite. You have to wrestle in him. Yeah, if you win, this. if you beat him, you get a shot at the title. There you go, Tony no, Khan Spur. You forced me to do Just it. Just edit this out. If you don't like it, cut it. Cut it. Edit it out. I'm not doing it. It's too I'm late. I'm not doing it. Then you shouldn't have said it. I thought, what did you, we were talking about this half here. What? What's the crack with that? <sighs> you tell, oh, yeah, that was, that was good, mate. <laughs> I feel like Tony Khan maybe if held you do show. Cent in this boy. Well, I think he heard a show maybe last week and he was kind of like, if he was Lanny, go out there and kind of make a, a stronger impression on the show. I mean, I think he's just, I don't think it looks like he's going to do some authority figure character on the show kind of thing. I think. <sighs> maybe it was just the other person that was meant to do it. it was was no wheel and he just went, for, oh, fuck, I'll do this next bit. Huh? Do, you, do you know what? Do you know what I think it sounds a bit like he'd watched the Kevin Keegan promo that he cut on Alex Ferguson <laughs> on Sports? I love it. I'll, I hope they go to Middlesbrough, and I hope they get. I, I'll, I'll I hope they if they beat them. It sounded like that. <laughs> I kind of quite. I mean, I kind of quite like the 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 kind of real sounding thing. Like, as just a guy who is his tele program, and he's like a bit flustered by this guy and stuff like that. You know, I mean, he did at least sound like somebody who would be scared if Kenny came up the ramp to batter him. You know what all I mean? Right. Which is, this is the thing, this is the problem I have with authority figures in wrestling, is you get all these, quite often you get these skinny guys, or these wee fat guys, and they're coming out and telling the wrestlers, you will be doing this, and all that, you know what I mean? And they're no scared enough. <laughs> I kind of think it's just fucking ridiculous. Anytime anybody who's a non-wrestler interacts with a wrestler, they should never, ever be acting like they're no scared of getting their, their ass booted. That's it. And so I think it was all right. I would rather that than I'm coming out and, and next cut week. some yeah some ballsy promo or whatever he sounded nervous and he sounded i think that's fine uh, that's fine i'm no angling still to just get a job with him 
But what I would say is, Tony, you're absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> You've made that a lot of sense. I'm I'm happy you said that there. That, but you was what was it you did say? It sounded like what? That was funny. It sounded like a. Uh, I'm I'm gonna tell Mama. I'm telling Mama that you to say to him you could have a match and then you didn't do it and then I'm telling my mommy that you you ruined the all the show. So, but but that's the thing, you know what I mean? I'm so many promotions that I've went to watch and then you know and then the promoter comes out and they're acting like Billy Big Boys and all that. Mm-hmm. When normally you'd just be like going, any of these fucking wrestlers should just be walking up that ramp, not fuck it. Huh? You know what I mean? That's that's what it should be. Ryan spotted a wido who was doing subtitles this week and says, <laughs> "Don't show this to Rab." LOL. But TNT closed captioning team must not be a fan of Maki Ito, uh, and the captions when Maki Ito is singing say, "Maki Ito singing in the background, mediocre at best." But that's fine to show that to me because her character is meant to be this kind of like delusional former pop star. She's not meant to be like an amazing singer. It's meant to be like she's she's a kind of deluded. So don't try and, well, and be a wido. Don't try and be a wido. I'm flashing. Everything in. makes sense tonight, doesn't it? He's, oh. uh, aye. You know it's, what I'm saying, John? A E dub. A E. Sorry. I didn't know anything about Mackie Ito until she turned up in AEW, and her Twitter game is fucking off the charts. Like, you see her. Uh, part... Have you been on her Twitter a lot, John? Aye. Oh, aye, aye. Uh, but she says. <laughs> On our last thing, it says, I'm going back to Japan. I can only speak Mackie Glish, but everyone was kind and I was very happy. Do you want to see me again? Question mark. I'm sorry, the next schedule has not been decided, but I hope we can meet again. Thank you. Fuck you all. AEW. <laughs> Fuck you all. That's brilliant. That's, That's brilliant. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I like that That's stuff. Brilliant, isn't it? Thank By you. By the way, Fuck I you all. Sh- there was, did, you, did anybody see because it got deleted? Did anybody see fucking... Flatliner commenting underneath oh, Tony Storms. Let's see it. What the fuck? By the way, fair play Tony Storm, man, because she fucking pwned that guy, yeah? She came back with a comeback, but... It was uh, great. What a fucking asshole. That was daft. And after last week's revelation that the chocolate bite of digestive is actually the bottom of the digestive, Dean has reached out saying, uh, if you need any info in the biscuit world, give us a shout. I have worked for McVitie's for years. So we need to get him on the show because I want to talk about biscuits. Open line next week. John, can you arrange that, mate? I'll get him for the running for next week so we can talk biscuits. Get that's him in for biscuit daft. Apparently, week. sorry to keep mentioning radio, but apparently that's what you learn at the old radio college. That's one thing that you're not meant to talk about is your favourite type of biscuit. Is that true, John? No, that's just it's just an, an old... Um, has, like, when you do phoners, you listen to a commercial station and people go, oh, what's your favourite uh, biscuit to dunk in your tea? Right. And that's, that's that old... It's just, like, again. Uh, just shape that. Uh, you're listening to uh, Go Radio, and uh, what? 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 Today we're talking on the show about. There's a survey out. It's just been published. I can't believe this, but they're saying the hobnob. The hobnob <laughs> is <laughs> the just best been published <laughs> biscuit to drink. Uh, Dunking your tea. I, I don't believe this. Well, give us a call now. I, what? Do hey, you... got, got to be talking about that for the next fucking two hours. That's what they do on radio programs, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, do that. Listen. You know, two hours ago, we told you that uh, people prefer brown toast to white toast. Uh, we've got a lot of calls on this. It's fucking <laughs> embarrassing, man. Let's, Let's go, go to the lines. You need to have a word with Coxie about this, Grado. <laughs> and if you want to get in touch with us about any of that or just random wrestling-related stuff, get us on Twitter at Wrestling Daft, on Insta at Wrestling Daft Podcast, just Wrestling Daft on Facebook, or email us at wrestlingdaft at gmail.com. Move over, Matt and Jeff, because the tag team, the number one tag team in shaving is Jeff and Andy. I'm going to explain who Jeff and Andy are in a wee bit, Rab, but first, how much do you love shaving your coupon with Harry's? Love it, mate. I absolutely love it. I, I, I'm always telling people, a uh, takeaway guy came to the door last night with some pakora for me, and I was saying to him, mate, you need to try Harry's out. Yep, I, I mean, it's, it's that's what we're here today. We're here to spread the word about Harry's because, well... We love the closeness. It's smooth. The glide is out of this world. I have always found that using Harry's is a lot more less sensitive on the skin. Uh, it's an enjoyable experience, and I actually look forward to shaving. Um, in comparison to other razors, this one is a top dog, and not only that, there is that foam and shave gel, which just smells impeccably good. But let me tell you about Jeff and Andy. These were two ordinary guys who were, f- they were fed up with overpriced razors. 
And what they done was they started Harry's to fix the shaving world because Harry, Harry's knew that there was only one way to ensure quality. So what did they do? They put their money where their mouth was and they bought their own factory. And by taking less profit, Harry's offers great quality products for a very fair price. It's the blades that you ask about. Well, let me tell you about it. The amazing quality blades, they're almost half the price of the leading five blade brands. Harry's trial set, which comes through the door for us now and again, and I tell you, these trial sets, they give you that weighted ergonomic handle. You've got your five position engineered blades with lubricating strip and a trimmer blade. You've got that rich lathering shave gel. The smell is phenomenal. And that travel blade clover. So get started with shaving with Harry's. And do it today because the trial set is only three ninety five. So support our podcast and get your trial set delivered to you. And that includes that razor handle, the five blade partridge, and the foaming shave gel and the travel blade cover. Get yourself off to harrys.com slash staff now. Harrys.com forward slash staff. It's a part of the show we invite you, the listeners, to do a run-in. Ask Grado why a piece of silver side has ended up where I'm arguing with his girlfriend. Or get Rab's opinion on the remake of Justice League by Zack Snyder. I'm watching it tonight. This week we welcome an ICW running for the smallest big man in the company. It's the one and only Mr. Chris Toll. All right. Here we go. All right, all right. How do you, how do you put this camera on? <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do you get a camera button? All right, lads, what's happening? There he is. How so, you doing, mate? What are you saying? No yeah. bad, no bad, lads. I hear he's yeah. been talking about me. Yep. We were talking about a. Uh, I Grado was telling a story about you in the ring. Do you know what, mate? I'll tell you what. I, it's a true story, but Grado always gets the facts wrong, man. What did I say? Always gets the facts wrong. It was in the garage. What did I say? ABC. ABC. Aye, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a fucking kick to the chest. <laughs> Right, what happened was Mark got me up for a tombstone because he was feuding with Jester, right? Right. And Jester comes out and punches him while he's got me up for a tombstone. Mark takes a back bump, but when he takes a back bump, he comes down and he kind of compresses me oh. kind of thing. Uh. Right, so Jackie Polo seen that straight away and pulled me out of the ring. And I go backstage and for some reason, Grado's the only person in the fucking dressing room, right? He's like, you are right? I said, oh, Grado, I've held my chest. <laughs> I'm a chess cradle. <laughs> right? So, I it was fucking, I, I tell you what, it was a badge and I tore all the cartilage in, cartilage in between my ribs. Did I you have to go to the door? Did you have to go and get it checked? I, I had to go to the hospital and everything, man. Nick's broken in an instant. That's it. <laughs> Don't try this at home. I, I, I know, man. We should do that. Somebody needs to do that. Edit fucking. T- t- <laughs> Don't be, a nice. <laughs> Don't be a clown. They, the they have no idea, didn't they? No, Chris. They've got no idea how strong they are. These guys. They've got no idea. Do you know what? Do you know what? It wasn't Mark's fault. I was holding on to him tight, and I think he was holding on to me tight, well, so, that, so that I never fell and hurt myself. But I don't know. I don't Should I took care? I don't know. Uh, when I was a when I did Kelvin Brawl, which you'll remember, Chris, aye. very well. Um, I'm a very first show, mate. Aye, the chaos at the end of that. Uh, that was the first time I met you too. That's right. Was that the first? No, 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 no. It wasn't. It was Oren Moore. Was the first. Oren Moore, mate. That was there. No. But at the end of that match, when I was outside, outside the ring, get a do enough like ran through and all of that. Big Kelly and Dane man just stepped on me. Just stepped on my chest. I had a fucking. Let me tell you, I had a sore chest. I, I, I ended end up with an injury. That night I couldn't eat laugh. I couldn't eat anything. Uh, do you know what? I think I think there was a few of them were a wee bit pissed off that they weren't on the card that night, mate. And that's oh, they, they, they let me feel it. Like, I don't think, but I don't think it was that either as well. I think it's just my wee soft ribs. we like, you know what I mean? And and knowing you probably have to like when that's happening, you probably have to like tighten yourself up or use some of your muscles or your core or something. You know what Aye, I mean? But you need to know that it's coming first. <laughs> Aye, I didn't know it was coming. That's for sure. But. Uh, but it's one of the things, man. You but listen, see nice. after a, see after a hang like that. That's the way I always look at it with a wrestling thing. You want to be on the other side of it feeling a bit fu- feeling like you've been there. I know that you was know? like last well, year's that was the first time I had ever done a show. You and you and Greg brought me in for for that gimmick kind of thing. And um big shame I put the heat on me and split my eyebrow open. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a pop that goes by the way. 
I know. Aye, he thought he'd done me a tell him to date, but I was like, I want it to look good fucking date, and he done it, man. Aye, aye, aye. And it was the, the pop was unreal, and he did a beautiful drop right down his knees, didn't he? Aye, and he wrapped he it up right on me. Proper. Oh, my God. Oh, mate, brilliant. I would love to see some of that footage back. That's Do you know what amazing. I was going to say to you, Rob? Is there no footage of that at all, man? Is there nothing? No, no, I'm sure. It. See if you go into my, see if you go to my YouTube channel. I've got about three videos on my YouTube channel, and I'm sure... The, the tag match, the full tag match, is on my YouTube account. I'm sure it is. You think so? hundred percent. Because I don't know if you were. I don't know if I was allowed to do that. Rab. I don't know if you were ever going to try and sell the DVD or anything. I no, think no, it no, recorded no. it, didn't you? Know? No, I don't, no, I don't no. I remember it not being recorded at all for some no, reason. Only a photographer. Uh, no, I've definitely, definitely got it online. So I have. Who else was in the match? Was Red in it? Wasn't he? It was uh, Greg and Red versus <clears throat> you and Rab. Aye, it's there, mate. Remember this? Twenty-four in minutes, the match, Gredo. Forty-four minutes. Grado doesn't remember anything past six months ago. No, nah, I mean, I'd, I just remember, the only thing I, I remember was like Greg Hemphill before it kind of buffing out going, oh man, this could end up. Like, he, he, he just said something like, I could just I can just see the, the crowd turning shit, around and going, this is shit. <laughs> By the way, it was fucking brilliant. The two of you's done tremendously well that night, man. Aye, fucking you. knackered. We were dying, Aye, absolutely you know. dying. See when uh, Greg put the sharpshooter on? Oh, no, right. the pop when he put the sharpshooter on was everybody thought it was going to be a Montreal screw job. Popping my back when he lost fucking balance during it and just went <laughs> right back onto me, fell back onto me, was fucking I'll tell you that was a pop. Well, troops, this full match is up on the internet 44 minutes long. We've got the Frankie Boyle running at the end. Man, it's got everything, everything's there. Well, well get on to Grado's YouTube and get it watched, folks. Get it watched. Right. Chris, so uh, have in fact you, it's not my YouTube, somebody else's, but I'll... obviously you've been doing uh, your football daft stuff. You've been keeping busy over the I lockdown. Have, I have, aye, been doing football daft. I'm back in filming with ICW as well. Uh, you're back in now. Aye, I've been back in since before lockdown. We filmed a we filmed a few episodes at um, Fight Club. Right. I've got a, I've got a new stable coming through. I'm back with Sakib. And we've right. got another, we've got another few faces that haven't joined yet on television, so I'll not, I'll not ruin the surprise for people. But uh, it's going well, man. We're we're calling ourselves the lads. We are Zed, what the Hardy Boys. <laughs> hey, the... Pure wrestling, pure wrestling <laughs> trips. But... Is this for and this is for the network? This is for I, I. It's 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 going out on Peacock. It's uh, the WWE Network. Um, it's you know what it's been, it's been well received so far and. And I'd, I've got to be honest with you, the improvement in Saqib and all the young boys over lockdown has been tremendous. And I think it's the fact that it's not in front of a live, a live audience, so they get that wee bit of freedom. You know what I mean? They can Aye. they can test their character and stuff like that without getting shot all over as all well. Right. So there's a few boys coming through the now. Um, there's ones that people will be uh, familiar with, like Thatcher Wright. He's really stepped up. Um, he's taking his Maggie Thatcher gimmick to fucking new heights. Uh, uh, you've got a, a young boy called Ian Skinner, who I hadn't seen much of before, but he's really, really good. Um, and there's Charlie Vice as well. Um, and Dean Ford. There's, a, there's quite a few coming through. And uh, now it's obviously, it's a new it's a new dawn kind of thing because they're not able to use all the, all the WWE people and stuff like that really anymore. They'll be getting brought in for for the big shows kind of thing, you know what I mean? Aye. Uh, but this is this is allowing them to build these new characters. And so well, this tremendous. is a good thing though, isn't it? It's like it forces you to kind of refresh Aye. and keep things, which is what a lot of promotions don't do. A lot of promotions don't do that. But you kind of forced into a position which could be a bit of a blessing in disguise, getting all Aye. the new God, people it's through. okay that it's good that there's still wrestling for folk to because I was just thinking about this after I seen somebody write about it on Facebook, man. By the time shows start to open back up, there'll be a lot of folk. I mean, I've not been in a ring for that's a year and a year, two days ago, two or three days ago since I, I last wrestled. Is that and a the, year since the pavilion? It's a year since the, since the pavilion. Pavilion, that's right, aye. And I'm thinking, you know, there's some folk who who might have been only wrestling a couple of years and to, to take a year out, a lot of people are going to need to be kind of broken in quite. <laughs> no gently you but you know what? what I mean no big you risks can be taken because a year out for that and try to do the stuff that you were doing a year ago that's going to be tough Absolutely. here's a question here's a question Grado right Here, here's one um, what would be your ideal first match back in front of an audience like who would you, you, you when you think about things like that like mm -hmm. ring rust 
and mm. needing to be kind of safe and have like a kind of solid match that you know will work and is nice and easy and you can you can pace it well and stuff like uh, that who who would you like to wrestle in your well, first match back Sha, Sha. obviously without a doubt how I <laughs> Sha, Sha. but I, probably it's not going to happen anytime soon because he's contracted so mm-hmm. uh, there's actually not that many folk that I can think because everybody everybody's contracted now I well, don't really probably do, do you know what I'm, ta- I'm talking rubbish because joint first would be Jester ja- Jester and Shah without a doubt mm-hmm. Jester's the best to work with. Yes, Jester's kind of obviously him and Shah aren't able to be the tag team anymore just now so he's kind of getting back down the hardcore icon kind of route and he's he's got this kind of intimidating aura about him again when he when he's coming out to the ring and stuff mm-hmm. he's, I, I love Jester's character like that to be honest with you don't get me wrong I love the kinky party stuff as well but I, that's the Jester that I that I first seen when I got into the uh, British mm-hmm. wrestling and that's definitely he's it, there's nobody that does it as well as him you know what I mean <laughs> I just, I just wonder what, what's going to happen. Like, yeah, I'd love to be involved in like, ICW's first show in front of a crowd. Know that I'm saying I don't want, to, I wouldn't want to do the the stuff. Well, I really wouldn't want to do the stuff with a crowd, but I'd love to be involved in like the very first. Buff their back as a crowd. You can make noise. You can make it half the capacity, full capacity, whatever. Because and especially, could you imagine going on first as well? Wow. I, I mean, folk are got, somebody's going to take a body slam, and the place is going to go absolutely mental. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe it. And you know that's what I'm saying. Like, see with the fact that the crowds aren't there just now, but they're watching it on the on the network and what have you. Mm-hmm. They're going to be familiar with these people now. See, like people like I mentioned, Thatcher, right? Even Shakib and stuff like that. If if they had have come out with a new kind of gimmick, it maybe wouldn't have been over straight away. But see now that folk are going to have seen them on the network, they know their characters and all that. See, the second these people come through the curtain, whether it be a the place booing them to fucking high hell or <clears throat> the roof coming off with cheers, mm-hmm. there's going to be a reaction for absolutely everybody because folk are absolutely champing at the bit to get back to a wrestling show. Right. Absolutely champing at the bit. I see or a, kind of casually flinging about on the network and the network, Nora. You've ever dreamed in a fucking million years that you'd be on the WWE network? Mate, do you know what? I was, actually, I was, I was talking to my mate in Australia the other day. I said, have you still got the WWE network? <laughs> he, says, he says, no, I get rid of it. I says, mate, you can search my name and videos come up. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant, man. It is, is brilliant. You know what? It's nuts, mate. Getting back to being a wrestling fan when I was a kid, you know, even being in any way connected to WWE is a complete and utter pipe dream, you know what I mean? So it's, no, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a big pop. It's a big pop. Aye. I know, man. A no, big, 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 big man like you, too, man. Do you know what I mean? Listen, mate, have you seen the search terms on WWE? Wait, wait, wait. It's me, then Undertaker. Is <laughs> <laughs> that the way it goes? Aye, because I've searched for myself that many fucking times. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but it's, it's one for up a Yuga house party or something, isn't it? It's like fucking... Aye, aye. You know what I mean? Turn that, turn that karaoke off. Wait till I show you this. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> no, hundred percent. It's an amazing. If you, an amazing. Rab, if you know that kind of go to thing that if you were on a pair and you had to put something, what, what, you know, what would you check this? If you go, to, I, I mean, know that I can imagine you doing that. Yeah, porn hub, mainly, that. mainly porn hub. <laughs> what the episode of Fake Taxi I was in? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't really. I don't really have a nah. You get it, John. I'm a humble guy. What do you mean? I don't John's, know. John's like, for example, the semi final against Infernal, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You are, well, you, uh, come and say, oh, I know you've got you have people watching whatever Grady. you'll have someone watching your match against Drew I'm guessing I, no the one that I always put on is it's not even wrestling it's, it's the, the, the pre-match Walter Smith and Alan McCoy talking about the, the, the Legends game and Walter Smith goes oh we've got Grado on our team that's my first go to I mean, you see us I always put that on <laughs> that's before any entrance well, while we're saying this, by the way, Celtic support are talking here, but big uh, get well soon to Walter Smith, a uh, fellow absolutely. Helensborough resident, That's Helensborough, right. Helensborough fella. I've, yeah, I've seen him about the tune a, a couple of times. Have you really? Have you really, Rabbi? Aye, I've seen him cutting about a couple of times. Aye. Have you? In here in the hardware aye, shop. So There's you, multiple clouds in Helensborough, no? I've seen Bobby Lennox a few times, Gredo, kicking about. Aye, mm-hmm. yep, yep. He's, aye, the statue's down here as well. So, surprised you've not been doing it for me selfie, but... Yeah, it was me that fucking built it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Chris, are you are you excited then about the future and you know ICW? 
I really am, mate. We've got a, we've got a big show on Saturday. Um, Bard, Bard. ICW Bard. Um, that goes on at five o'clock on Saturday night. That's a that's a uh, steel cage pay per view kind of. Oh, but like lockdown. I kind of like lockdown, except they couldn't call it lockdown, which would have been the perfect name for it in this right now. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, but they yeah. couldn't call it lockdown. No, but just... Bard's just as good. I like Bard. Aye. Um, so we can watch it live at five. Was it live? It's, 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 it's pre-recorded. It's, it's pre-recorded, live. but you know what I mean. We can right, watch it, it as live. it goes out. Like, right, right. right cool. And were you there for late tapings too? Why? I wasn't, mate. No, it's only four matches on it because right. it's only it's only an hour long. So we're we're not quite established enough yet to to be getting on that. But we're working towards a match at Fear and Loathing. I think we're going to be working towards a match at Fear and Loathing. So have they got yeah. any announce any announcements for a show in anywhere or that hopefully hopefully I, and I don't know if I'm maybe overstepping the mark saying this but fingers crossed there will be fans at Shug's House Party. Right. Fingers crossed. So I'm sure you'll be getting contacted Grado. We've got to send oh, me tickets somehow mate. I mean if everything's good to go man I'd love that. I'd how many? So I'm just trying to think. I wonder how capacity will work. Fifteen thousand is the the word. The now fifteen thousand. So they're going to be hanging for the fucking rafters and that. Aye, going to jam fifteen thousand into the garage. <laughs> 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 I actually don't know, Rab. To be honest with you, mate, I don't know what the capacity will be allowed. I don't know how many people or what distance will need to be, but. Um, see, as long as there's any sort of crowd, as long as it's well, it's well policed and stuff like that. It'll be fucking magic, man. Even just being able to get out in front of fucking ten men and a dog would be brilliant, you know. Aye, aye. Just anybody being there, and you can see that even with the the shows that the American shows they've been doing, where they, you know they have a wee amount of fans. And obviously, I'm basketball daft. Uh, yeah. I do my podcast, basketball daft, every week. And uh, the NBA have started letting in fans into some of the arenas and stuff like that. And the difference it makes just having a wee drop of fans. Oh, it right. makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, he's you know, a big like, basketball fan. He loves the Blue Jays, don't you, mate? I'm a big Blue Jays guy. <laughs> big, you know big Blue Jays Super guy. Super WrestleMania. Do you hear that they're talking about? Twenty five. Forty five thousand. They're talking for WrestleMania. What? Each I night. Was no, John. no, no. It was twenty five for the Super Bowl. But apparently they're talking at the moment. I mean, it's not Aye. being confirmed. But forty five thousand are talking for WrestleMania. I mean, I mean, like WrestleMania is already exciting. However, when there's no been any crowd for a year, how good would that be turning on WrestleMania oh. and see it would be see, superb? You're saying there, Gredo, see being first out at that. Aye. And I'll Can tell you something, yeah. the stadium will be it won't be like WrestleMania that, that's happened in the past where folk filter in, they don't care about the pre matches and all that. That place will be fucking packed. Aye. For I'm the just very re- first bell. I'm just really pleased for Drew because this is going to be his chance to. I mean, I expect his chance to win that title in front of a, in front of a crowd, you know what I mean? And I think It'll be, I mean, the crowd are just going to be up for it. You know what I mean? They're doing that across two nights again, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. is great, I know, which they should stick to because they big long WrestleMania nights, the, the, the crowd gets too tired. I've they said get, it they get knackered out. I've said it for years, honestly. Seven hours it was one year. Oh, right. it's just and desperate. It, and it was man. cold as well. It was, it was one of the years it was held in a stadium and it was freezing. See the year the Hardy Boys came back? Aye, aye. It, was, it was cold. It was apparently it was really cold that night in the fucking. Yeah, the, the punters were absolutely freezing. So doing it over two nights is, is the right way to go, I think. I mean, hold on, hold on, Chris. Are you having a wee McDonald's here? I was earlier on, mate. What did you have? Product, what did you have? Placement. Just went for a wee McChicken sandwich. A wee, a wee light you, lunch. The fries as well? Oh, of course. Had a burger king too. Yeah, that, you're a dirty bastard. I know. But do you know what? That's funny you saying about the punters being freezing. Can okay, you imagine like folk running about backstage getting Vince's here? They're fucking freezing their boys off out there, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> You get any shawls? Do we get shawls for the, get a, for the crowd? Get a, pyro, get a pyro on the go, Vince. They're fucking freezing out there. <laughs> oh. so how, apart from all the wrestling stuff now, Chris, how have you been finding the whole lockdown hanging on? How has it been for you? You got a dog, I, didn't you? I, I bought a dog. I bought a dog so that I had somebody to hang about me when the missus was at work. What's Good. your dog's name? Archie. Archie, right. beautiful. Aye, beautiful. Archie any word of a vaccine yet, Chris? Um, do you know what? I was expecting my vaccine a lot sooner because, let's be honest, there's no a fucking bit of me hanging the right way, Rab. Do you know what I mean? So I've got to... Uh, but I've still, I've still not got a letter in, mate. I've still not got a letter in telling me I need to go down, but I'm terrified of the needles. Give him a phone. Give him a phone. You do need to give him a phone. I'm the 30th and I'm starting to feel like guilty because like fucking nobody else has had theirs yet. But I'm getting mine in the 30th, but I think it's because I live out in the sticks. I'll be getting my wee, my wee cream in on my arm before I get it. 
Turning, right. up, turning away like a shite bag as if Mark Coffey was running at me with a boot. You know I mean? <laughs> 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 we'll all be sorted soon. We'll all be good to go. We're all getting Can't it, aren't we? We're all getting I, it, aren't we? We're all I like saying it. aye yet. Aye, man. I don't so, care. I fucking. I've put loss in my body. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> John's went I'm... quiet. John, has it. you getting yours, John? Oh, no, definitely. definitely. I'm just laughing. Like We had a, a letter in, in the radio from, um, from a prisoner in Bar L. And he came up with a suggestion. He'd written to the radio show saying that we want to settle debate here. It's obviously his mates have put this up to it. Saying, why don't, right? And this was his suggestion. I was like, see the planes that the farmers used to, to dust crops. Okay. <laughs> he says, why don't we put the vaccine into that and just fly <laughs> over the pl- all the places? Just <laughs> over. That's <laughs> why. See the old mini series V about I love fucking it. aliens. That's yeah. what they did with the red powder that killed, so the, it was. So killed it was. the aliens. They ended the crop dusted the fucking That's right. everywhere and all that. By the way, there's something to that. <laughs> Is that how you would prefer to get it done, Chris? You would prefer yeah. to get a fucking plane flying over the top of you and it dropped you know, on you? Do you know my two greatest fears is needles and aeroplanes, mate? I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Chris, thanks for coming on. No Everything sounds all. really exciting with the lads. Where's he? Um, well, that's with a Z. Don't forget with a Z, like a Hardy Boys. And everybody, have a, <laughs> have a search for Chris Toll on the network. On the it's beautiful, the network. mate. Peacock. Beautiful. Just under the Undertaker. Under the Undertaker. Thanks very much, lads. No worries, man. Great to see you, Chris. Right. Tatty bye. Tatty bye. Tatty bye. And if you want to be on the run in, best bets to sign up to our Patreon as our World Heavyweight Champs get first dibs. IC champs get second dibs. Cruiserweight champions get third. Get on patreon.com forward slash wrestling daft to get involved. <laughs>single week on this show we like to separate Sorry. the good for the bad the Vince McMahon promos for the Tony Khan promos and I'd just like to state that that was John that wrote that and I actually think that Tony Khan's promo was really really good uh, so anything you're burying and anything you're putting over uh, Christ what did I think No, whatever I saw that I liked I quite liked Cody Rhodes and uh, Errol Mero what do you call him Pentagon I liked that. I watched that last night. That was a good match. And uh, actually, to be honest with you, for as much as I didn't like that promo last week between Eddie Kingston and Dean Ambrose, last night they had a really good one. They had a really good promo. Kingston is just the best talker, without a doubt. Without a doubt, the best talker in wrestling. Is he the best talker in wrestling? Let me think. I, I'm I, just think he think, might, I think he might be. In terms of, in terms of believability, I... you believe what he says and... To be honest with you, they two as a team, I, I, I like it. I just didn't like that stuff last week. But yeah, uh, I, I want to put our Big E's promo. Um, Big E has been doing some great promo work. I just want to put our Big E in general because I just I just like him and I love him. I love it when they book him strong and he goes in and just dominates somebody and annihilates them. I think, see if they, I wish they would just strap a rocket to Big E. I really do. Just strap a rocket to him. I really did think that this WrestleMania, Big E would be, you know, going for the, going for the big one. Uh, but it's maybe right. too soon. But he's just great, I think, you know what I mean? I don't think he's too soon, to be fair, mate. And I, and I had the same idea as you. When you see them do the, the, the documentary on them and stuff like that, you think, right, this is it. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Anyway, let's see what the punters are saying. Scott wants to put all the lights out match between Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. Easily the best women's match AEW has put on so far. Uh, I've not seen the match yet. But I will say this. Uh, Britt Baker has really come on to a game, hasn't she? Aye, and uh, judging by the internet, man, it, it looks as if it kicked off last night. A lot of folk tweeting that they were proud of that match. So I'm only about seventy five percent through last night's AEW, but I'm going to, as soon as this comes off, I'm going to watch it because it looks interesting. Brett Baker, she 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 was a star right for the start, in my opinion. When AEW started, I thought she was really really good. Um, I think she's improved so much. She's I think she's really worked hard. You know what I mean? Right. It's like she always looked like a good bet, but. I think she's really, really came on. Thunder Rosa has always been amazing, though. Like, you know, she was a real standout in NWA power and stuff like that as well. And so, by the way, I liked your car, Jane Cargill. Wow. She's going to be a star, man, I think. Do you know, Hink? You love Jade Cargill, didn't you? She's brilliant. 
Uh, Colin wants to bury Shane McMahon's annual WrestleMania return. A company of a thousand wrestlers relying on the owner's sweaty son to jump <laughs> off something that is biggest pay-per-view. Just rubbish. Right, again, I just want to say here that Shane McMahon has had more uh, great matches at WrestleMania than quite a lot of people. Would that not be fair to say? Agreed. Aye. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I don't know how you can argue that. What is he going to be doing? What's, what's the chat? Uh, it looks like he's going to be doing something with Braun Strowman. All right. Okay. All right. By something, I mean, obviously. Well, I'm wrestling match. I thought he was going to be top dog. Bronze wants to put her NWA back for the attack, followed by Fast Lane on Sunday. Power is back next week also. Can he wait? And wants to bury Jacksonville Dixie cutting that promo. Who was that? What's that? Don't know what that is. I've not seen that. I don't What's know what that? that is. Jacksonville Dickie. Um, obviously, there's a wee bit of drama about uh, NWA back for the attack now because Tyrus has been booked. And what's know, wrong with Cyrus? And there's been well, you know, there's just a bit of drama over it. Oh, um, is this because he's he's on Fox News? It's not because he's on Fox News, it's because there were certain allegations made about him. Um, which obviously we don't know enough about, but there was allegations Obviously, made about him. That. <laughs> and it's yeah. you know, a lot of people are not no pleased about the booking. Um Louis E wants to bury the segment in Raw between Shane and Braun. And wants to put all the promo between Coach Trip, Jason Reed, and DCT on ICW on demand. Only check that out. Always like to watch a Coach Trip promo. Uh, Daniel wants to bury Kermit and the name calling of Penelope. Have your opinion, but leave the petty, abusive name calling out of it. Uh, and he wants to put over me playing Morrowind. I have uh, this is computer game chat, but I have went back to the old classics recently. Uh, John wants to bury Jim Carnett, always something in wrestling he doesn't like, and wants to put over Bobby Lashley versus Sheamus on Raw. Sheamus is the most underrated guy in WWE, always puts in a good match. Uh, who is the most underrated guy in WWE? Hmm. Let me think. Who would that be? I, don't, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't Sheamus tell you. is quite underrated, I would say. Um, who's the most underrated guy? Um, 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 uh, Kane. Kane. Maybe Kane. Corporate Kane. Sean wants to bury the fact that Strowman will now have on his WrestleMania record, teaming with a child and no fighting Shane fucking McMahon. Need to, right, hold on. Again. 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 Let's look at this. As if it's like a shameful thing to have on your record that you, you wrestled Shane McMahon. As if that's like, do you think if you if you go cut angle in a room and when are you ashamed of the fact you wrestled Shane McMahon once? Okay, yeah. Oh. Fucking come on now. Rap this. Rap this chat. I would rather watch Shane McMahon wrestle somebody which you know is going to be something. You know it's going to be something than watch one of these countless, you know, 50-50 dull matches that just make up a, an overlong card. Uh, you know, I would love to see Tony Khan wrestle as well. I think Tony Khan would, would be fantastic in the ring. <laughs> Uh, so Stephen wants to put over MJF. Did you know? I like this. Did you read what Sean said at the end there? I oh, know what they say. Need to oh. put over the sh- need to put over the sheer shit housery of Impact sharing Lashley versus Drew from 2016, the day after it's made for Mania. They are hiding stuff like that. Yeah. Hiding stuff like that. So as soon as AJ Styles debuted in WWE, they released a best of AJ Styles DVD, and they done it with Punk for years. I think Proper calmly behaviour. That's isn't funny, it? man. Proper calmly behaviour. Pulled on West. Uh, Sean wants to bury the oh sorry Stephen wants to put over MGF's promo in the light suit match on Dynamite and wants to bury and burn Sean Spears' ugly suit. That was a hackett suit last night. It, it was been last night. Poor fella. But some of these a lot of these boys are not used to being suits, so I can I can understand. Uh, Willie wants to put over Brett Baker versus Thunder Rosa again on Dynamite. Tremendous unsanctioned match. Unsanctioned match, but I saw some pictures for it and there was a referee in the ring. Uh, which is always very confusing when there's an official <laughs> referee in the ring for an unsanctioned unsanctioned match. And he wants to bury NWA for booking Brodus Clay Tyrus while he's in the middle of being sued for sexual harassment. Kev wants to put over... I told, Rich... I've just Googled that. I totally didn't know about that. That's horrible. Kev wants to put over Rick Swan versus Moose at Sacrifice and also put over Catalyst Wrestling, which you can watch for free on both YouTube and Fight TV and has been putting on some great matches. Do not use this space for advertising unless you're getting the money out. Do not advertise your wrestling promotion on this show unless you are paying the boys, just like Harry's day and like the, the guys that make you shave your boys, they do it as well. Thomas <laughs> says he wants to bury a big show moaning about being denied chances in the WWE in one sentence, then talking about his sitcom in the next, but still moaning as he didn't have his own parking space. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to put over Orton versus Bliss. 
as it sounds like the WWE is just trolling Rab now. Well, let's talk about this. So did you know that at WrestleMania, no, at a, what was it called? What's it Fast called? Lane. That Fast Lane. At Fast Lane, Randy Orton is fighting Alexa Bliss. Did you know this? Great. No. It's Fast Lane this week? This Sunday. Right. So it's Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't have an issue with this on like, well, I, right, well, here's the thing. A... I don't have an issue with it being like, a, you know, a mixed match and a guy wrestling a woman, right? But the, the first point, obviously, is that this is Randy Orton. Alexa Bliss is getting in the ring with, so he's going to kill her, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is this. We all know that it's just there for the Fiend to come back. We all, you know, and as if we're all going, I can't wait to see Randy Orton wrestle the Fiend again. I hope the Fiend come. I can't wait to see them fight again. I just don't know what they're doing here. This story is dead. Surely what this match, just for what you made me watch on YouTube a couple of weeks ago, it's going to be all that magic spells and all this push and fucking lights gone out and her coming out and dresses a monster and it'll be cinematic. She'll come out and black, black tar will come out her mouth and then the lights mm -hmm. will go out and then the Fiend will be there and then they'll slowly walk about the ring for 20 minutes. That's right. what you'll get. Well, Randy Orton at a WrestleMania should be in the ring with somebody that is able to go at Randy Orton's uh, pace. We want a moment like fucking Seth Rollins doing the curb stomp on Randy Orton and up into the RKO that fucking lifted that WrestleMania crowd right after, after seats. And you're just, what just please, I mean, just end this story. It's dead, man. Maybe Soja Boy might turn up. Maybe. Maybe. I just kind of feel like I feel I just I, I just couldn't care less about the fiend, man. It's, and it, it pains me to say that because I think it was a character that was exciting and interesting at the start. But once again, it's just ran out of steam for me. See you stay. So it's day. <laughs> ran out of steam for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you disagree, please get in touch. Let us know. Uh, and last week's listener of the week, Andy, get in touch, trying to reclaim his title, trying to retain. Uh, he'd like to put all the guys that build the ring so that the wrestlers can do all the wrestling moves for the fans. And he'd like to bury the guys who then take the ring down so that the wrestling has to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody has to go home. It'll be the same guys, so I'm neutral, he says. Do you know what? It's, just, that's, that's, it's funny you say that, right? Because I've got um, a guy called Bob Rosen, who was, who was the, the TNA ring guy. For years, mm -hmm. what a guy! Just a right old Ken. You could, you we could just imagine what he's like if he was Scottish. If you know what I mean, Ken. He, he, if he was Scottish, he would be given all that. I'll make that ring safe for the boys. Uh, they get in there, and I make sure that they're safe. When I take it up, and I take great pride in my ring. That's a, that's the kind of guy he is, right? Just a lovely big old man. And he was a TNA guy for years and years and years. But when Jeff came in, and yeah, what do you what do you call it? Anthem and stuff like that. Everything get cut. Bob get the sack. The referees, your Errol Hermers, everything just got totally stopped. Ripped. And you mm -hmm. felt you felt terrible for these guys because they were old and they had been doing it for years and years and years on the road and they loved it and they were the best and they would do anything for you totally. That was their pride looking after the boys and looking after the wrestlers. Anyway, you go on his Facebook now. AEW hired him. He's the guy that does the AEW ring now. Excellent. Happy oh. ending. It's brilliant seeing him like ringside, and he's the guy with a big beard. And I, it's just you know that way. I was, I was, I delighted for him, delighted for him because I knew it broke his heart. Aye, Probably aye. when he when he got told a couple of years ago, right, fuck your your surplus to requirements. I was brilliant that bit, Grado. Hmm. I really enjoyed that. No, I, you're a lovely guy, man. Big fucking Mark, but he's a lovely guy. Oh, I'd love to speak to him. He'd be really interesting to speak. Mate, to but him. mate, listen. Ooh. Bob would honestly, and he would. He's got some good stories, man. Yeah, he's yeah. always going to about how he was muckled up with Dusty Rhodes and stuff like that. You want me to DM him? Yeah, Try and get listen, him on the show because I would love to just say, mate, how do you build a ring? I, I think a lot right. of people oh, wouldn't mate, even he'll know. Love it. He'll love it. Yeah, a he lot would of people wouldn't it. even know. He would love right, it. Beautiful. Let's do that. Uh, that was great. I love that credo. Mm -hmm. See, when you're in your house, you always lock your door, don't you? You don't want that random passerby thinking that they can peek their head into your living room and watch what you're doing. And that right, Rab? So why? Just let them come in. Well, I would advise you against that. All right, sorry. Why would you then let folk in when you're online? 
using the internet without ExpressVPN, it's like sitting in your living room with that front door unlocked. Did you know that your internet service provider, like your Comcast, your Verisons, they know every single website that you visit? And worse, they'll sell this information to ad companies and the big tech giants, and they'll use your data to target you. Well, listen up. ExpressVPN, it puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, tablets, routers, the lot. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have ExpressVPN. And the best part is ExpressVPN is as easy as looking your front door. You just fire up the app, click the in button, and you're protected. ExpressVPN is the number one ra rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me and you believe that your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash that today. Use my exclusive link here now. It's expressvpn.com slash daft. And you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com forward slash daft. You just made the list! Lists are everywhere and they're even on our show as we look at wrestling-related lists every week. You can vote for what you want us to talk about at patreon.com forward slash wrestling daft. This week, as it was 316 day, we thought it would be remiss if we didn't rank Stone Cold's greatest moments. I'm going to Surely list... we've done this. We're we have not. We haven't. So I'm going to do my three, and these are just my three favourite moments, right? My three favourite Stone Cold things. Uh, and I know everybody's going to be like, oh, it'll be all the usual ones again, but I don't care, right? These are my three, right? My, my number three is... Uh, Canadian Stampede. No, it's the Wind Beneath My Ring uh, segment when Stone Cold was heel, when the Alliance thing was going on, and they had everybody singing, you are the Wind Beneath My Ring. <laughs> and and that was just amazing but it also that choice encapsulates that whole era of stone cold being a heel when suddenly we realized that stone cold was this amazing comedy talent as well we knew that stone cold was a badass we knew he was a great in the ring we knew he could cut an amazing promo there was one thing we didn't know that stone cold steve austin could do and that was comedy and then he turns heel and he's doing all these comedy bits with Kurt Angle and then, it, you know, and it builds up to one beneath my ring and it's absolutely brilliant. So that's my number three. My number three is that. My number two. What I consider to be maybe the pinnacle of the pre-big match promo. And it is Jim Ross sitting down with The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, for that interview before the WrestleMania match, which is just, just I, I can't tell you how many times I've watched that. It's amazing. Isn't it? I need that title rock more than you could ever imagine. Yeah, it's unbelievable, and I've watched it so many times. It's real. It looks real as well, doesn't it? And the the way fucking Stone Cold is looking at the Rock Aye. all the way through that, the look on his face, and Jr. is brilliant, and the Rock is brilliant, and it's just. Perfect. You could have watched it for half an hour. That that's, a, that's a good shout. That it's so great, and I think it kind of when people talk about great Stone Cold moments, they kind of forget about this bit quite a lot. It's amazing. My number one uh, is a match, and funnily enough, I was talking about it with Greg Hempel. Watched it a couple of days ago, and messaged me, and he was like, "Fuck, I just watched this match again. It's just unbelievable." And I'm like, oh my God, I just talking about, I it's the best, it's best. And it's and it's Austin and Bret Hart. It's right back at the start. Um, it's Austin and Bret Hart and that blade job and that. I just don't, I keep coming back to it. I keep coming back to that match because I just kind of feel that was the start of everything that I loved, really. Everything I loved about that era and WWF started there. It started with that. The Stone Cold character came alive and stuff. And just the match itself is fantastic. Bret Hart's brilliant in it. And Stone Cold is just, he's just a star in that match. He just becomes an absolute star. Um, I love it. Can, what, see, can I ask you about that? Um, I remember when we, I know we were talking about it. This may be what I think, but we told, we, um, 
with Greg. I remember talking to him about wrestling, and he did he know miss a lot of the attitude era. He never really bothered it about it then. I remember talking to him as he, as he went back now, like and watched it with, the, with his boys and stuff like that. I think it was. Because, or am I getting that wrong? I think it was because of like all the chat about Stone Cold this week. He just thought, and Greg loves Bret Hart, so he was like, "I'm going to watch that Stone Cold and Bret Hart match again." Right. And see, I don't know when when it was the last time you watched that Gredo that match, but it's it's no dated at all either. It's just like it's superb, isn't it? Really great stuff. You know what I mean? And that finish is just. It's just brilliant, you know. What I mean, when you know the stuff behind the scenes about it as well, you know, it wasn't allowed to get color, and Brett was like, "Let's just do it, and I'll, I'll mm-hmm. take the heat for it if there's heat on it." It's just brilliant, man. It's just, I just love it. Anyway, let's see what the what, what about you? What's your favorite Stone Cold moment? Right. Free when he wore the Ranger stat at the SEC in Glasgow backstage. Uh, two when the Taney's bond went home because I was in holiday in Benidorm with my mom and dad, and it fucking spiced the holiday right up. And one, when I met him at WrestleCon, I tell him, can I get a picture with you seen as I wrestle for TNA? <laughs> the number one Stone Cold moment involves you. <laughs> 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 Fucking unbelievable. Oh, oh, here, I wrestle for TNA, can I get a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he was in a room with Kenny Omega, walks in, all right, mate, how you doing? Stone Cold, how's it going, my man? <laughs> <laughs> Or I get too excited then. Can, can we put our fingers up? Can you put your finger up? <laughs> I love a million stone cold things. I love the stuff on the bridge with the rock. I love him getting crucified by Undertaker. I love even wee things like uh, he had, what? He had, <laughs> I love that. I love it all. Love that, man. I love, I love uh, he had a match with um, Regal uh, that Stephanie was the referee in it. I love that match as well, where he's just tearing Regal apart and just just one of the matches on Raw, just a match on Raw. Uh, I just, I just, there's too much stuff. I love that fucking promo video he's got. I love when he goes, uh, what is it he says again? You remind me of a piece of trash or something. <laughs> you remind me of a I, piece of I, trash. That was a good one. Something like that. You know what I mean? And I always think about it. I always think about it. I'm like, you remind me. So there's a piece of trash he saw. <laughs> and this person has reminded them of that particular piece of trash. <laughs> I just love him. You know, I just I think know. he's great. I, I see he the is thing. Westy says one of mine was when he was the referee at the Battle of the Billionaires when he took out Shane McMahon and replaced him at WrestleMania 32. It's a deep cut there. Wow. Yeah. Stephen said the beer hosing he gave Vince in the rock on the go home WrestleMania 15 Raw. Toby says, I know the obvious ones, Fofo Wofa, <laughs> but I genuinely love, he's going to give us a classy one here. I genuinely love when he comes out to stomp a mud pie on Santino Marella because Santino wouldn't stop slagging the condemned movie he was in. Ends in a beer bath for Santino Maria in half the front row when the hose goes off early for the beer truck. Dave says Scudden Vince's napper with a bedpan. Bump, amazing. Steven says the brawl with Booker T in the supermarket. Classic. Wow. Classic stuff. Thomas says WrestleMania 13. Entire match is absolutely perfect, but oh my God, that entrance. Absolutely. I agree with you, Thomas, when the glass smashes on that doorway and he comes through. Incredible. I think that's that's maybe my favourite entrance ever. That's I think right. that glass shattering and I'm walking in. Oh, my God. It looks amazing, man. Uh, it looks good, doesn't it? Andy says when he ran down Regal for screwing him over, Austin beat the piss out of him. Austin, Brett, submission match. Outstanding. I go. Scott says my favourite was when he came out and destroyed the Alliance, pulled up for the pub with a pool cue. And leathered everybody in sight, the old stone cold. What was the name of the boozer? I always remember the boozer. What was the boozer again? Remember the boozer he came for? He was playing pool and they kept saying the name of the boozer. Oh, I can't. I need mind. to find that out. That's going to burn. And Willie says, holding Vince hostage with a toy gun. McMahon316 says, I just pissed my pants. Classic. So many great stone cold Steve Austin bits. We could go on and on. Truly, uh, truly a legend for the ages. Uh, and obviously Gredo has met him, which makes me feel really jealous. I do have a magazine, however, that is signed to Rab from Stone Cold Steve. Do you? Well. You never tell us that one. I do have that. I've got a, a, a WWF magazine. Uh, so, do you remember this thing with, with the pub was called? No, was no, it like the, the Cozy Inn or something? I, remember I don't even remember the names of the pubs I go to. Never mind <laughs> the, name of the pub Stone Cold Steve Austin was in. So we've got loads of gear you can wear while you're listening to the show as in merchandise. Designs included uh, things like the mark is here, with a picture of the wrestling daft belt on it, wrestling's kid on, and the immortal quote for the immortal Hulk Hogan, he still hasn't sued us yet for this. Good night, Hulkamaniacs and Jabroni Marks without a life, it don't notice a work when you work a work and walk yourself into a shoot, Marks. Get that in a t-shirt as well, and all the classics, I'm going to take a bump for you, chips, cheese and donor meat, Margaret Ells a fiend. Not only that, but we've got hoodies, face masks, phone covers, trucker caps, we have got bum bags. 
uh, we have got so much merch. Uh, you can get some of this merch to support the show. Puts a wee bit of money into our pockets as well, which is always good. Check out our range at shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash wrestling daft now, or check out the links on our Facebook page or Twitter at wrestling daft. <laughs> Two wrestlers are on their way back for a show, trying to pop one another. This is Wrestling Daft Road Stories. You send us your story and we read them out. So let's jump in the car for this one. This car started. Oh. It's my new brief with Jinky. Wow, smart. I've been getting a lot of bookings, mate. I've been getting a lot of bookings. I've been able to get a, a wee upgrade, you know what I mean? The wheels. How's it? How's it anyway? It's a wee, uh, wee Volvo, um, Volvo moustache. You know, one of them. I'm sorry, mate. I think my Uncle Jimmy's got one, man. Very nice. He's got a moustache. Very nice. I'll get you to the next tune, they bother me. There we go. Yeah, Tell you a wee story, yeah, while well, we're getting there. It kind of felt like, mate, as if there's been a, a bit too many stories about come this mm. past while. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, that, yeah. Keep you agree? Stuff are come daft, man. We're come daft on this. We need right. to. Oh, we need some talking about come in these long drives, mate. Right, so here's whatever you talk about cum, I just want to cum everywhere. <laughs> here's one of my best be no cum stories, all right? One of my NCSs. Many years ago, right, before I met the good wife, right? Uh, just to clarify, you met. No, I'll, many years ago before I met the good wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's character I'm playing, right, in this segment before, before I met the good wife. I was on a lad's holiday at Ibiza, right? Two objections, two objectives on this holiday, mate, right? You know me, bevy <laughs> and shagging, right? It was the last night of the holiday and I was determined to get a plunder, right? <laughs> However, time and time again, I either fucked it for myself or I get knocked back, right? So much so that it became known as the night of seven failures. Right? So I was chatting up this one last year all week, had her and her pal up a flat for a drink before we all went out to the strip, right? So we're all out in the piss, me and her flop and whatnot. I'm thinking this is a sure thing. She goes to the lavvy. For some reason I thought it was a good idea to start chatting up her pal next, right? Funnily enough though, her pal starts flopping back and her pal's a bit better looking, so I'm thinking she's getting patched. I'm worried to try it with her mate, right? But then she comes back for the lobby and starts arguing with her pal because we we're getting a bit too cosy. So they end up bath raging with me and they fuck after another bar, right? That's two done. I was kind of dating a lassie at the time, going to Ibiza, right? Nothing serious, hadn't even slept together, but she was in Ibiza at the same time and happened to come and ask bar shot shortly after I fucked it with the other two birds, right? So I'm thinking to myself, right, fuck <laughs> Grado, I'm thinking to myself, right, surely fuck I'll get my uncle over here. Goes to talk to him, I can't exaggerate enough how fuck she was, man. Jaw was swinging like Kofi Kingston, hanging for the elimination chamber roof, right? Couldn't even hold her head up. I realised it was me talking to her, right? So I fucked off. Right, that's three. There was another bird in that bar who I was talking to for a bit, right? But in the most respectful way, right? In the most respectful way, she was absolutely hacking. <laughs> oh, for fuck me. And I couldn't bring myself to do it. That's four. Me and the boys went to a Celtic pub after that, right? Go talking to a lass that worked in there. Tried my luck again. Was hoping that was me finally getting somewhere then. Bam! The last year I'd been with a few times at the start of the holiday arrives. <laughs> and starts the bunny boiler par. This fucking segment in this show is going to get me cancelled, by the way. Oh, mate, it's fucking horrible. It's something fucking like worse than it. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm fucking sitting here sweating reading this. Anyway, as if we'd entered into some relationship or something. So that's pissed off the last year it's worked in the bar and got my chances, right? That's fine. Now this one sounds made up, but I swear to God it's true. Walking down the strip to another bar, and this group of lassies walk past, start singing Celtic songs, right? I'm wearing the hoops. So we join in, bit of banter. It's a lassie's hen do, so she's with her pals and her family, right? One of her aunties. <laughs> <laughs> one of her aunties. Scheme, scheme milf, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what the fuck, man? Takes a right fancy to me, right? Blatantly hits it with, I'm happily married, but I'll cheat in my man. <laughs> no, no, this is grim. This is fucking grim. So I'm hanging jackpot. <laughs> in, 
end up lynching this old Danny in a club, right? One of the boys I was with thought it would be funny to tell her I had a bird at home, didn't he? But for some reason, that's pissed her off. She's <laughs> wanting to cheat on her husband, but I can't cheat on an imaginary bird. <laughs> that scheme woman for you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's six. Oh my God, hurry up, get to seven for God's sake. <laughs> Save the best for last. At the end of the night, about to call it a day and head home. <laughs> Walking back up to the hotel with my mate and we bumped into two English lassies, right? They start asking about my tattoos and that. <laughs> <laughs> All the bars are shutting, so I suggest we buy a cargo and go down the beach, right? It's right up for it. Secretly high five. <laughs> high five and my mate thinking we're going to get a ride down the beach, right? So I'm buying all this baby at 6 a.m. We head down the beach, get all the drink tanned, and then I suggest we go skinny dipping. You would not believe this. <laughs> As soon as the last drop of alcohol is done, the lassies lose interest and just fuck off. Walk away and leave us two, us two sitting like a pair of horny wee gimps. Seven. And that gentleman, Grado, <laughs> is the night of seven failures. That was for Jason, that wee story. Oh, for fuck's sake. I kind of think now, Grado, it's almost getting to the point is this is like kind of performance art in a way. And it's almost like the listeners are trying to get, trying to destroy your careers. <laughs> but Gina's the most offensive stuff to redo. I mean, we fucking said there was like, I mean, I know there was no cum, but why everything's about fucking shagging folk and <laughs> see <laughs> what we were meaning was like, see when we're saying a no cum for three weeks, what we were meaning was let's have some funny, kind of nice, um, PG friendly stories or like at least no stories that just make us see. Here's my point here if somebody just turns on this podcast and skips to this bit. It we sounds fucked. like I'm fucking saying these things, like scheme milf and all that. Aye. It sounds okay. like it's coming out of my mouth. Aye. It's all right, you're putting on a voice and all that. Just do it, in, do it as a character. Do it as Aye, a but, 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 I think when we, we, when we first started this, we were looking for stuff like, oh, I remember the time my Uncle Terry fell asleep in the train and he wound up in largs and all Aye. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like funny stories. <laughs> That's what That's what hear, no, just I mean. listen, me harm you, Jason, right? But what I would say is some of this chat is uh, objectionable. And in, 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 in places, and it's making it very difficult for two industry professionals like me and Grado to perform <laughs> to the best of their abilities these segments because we need to keep breaking kayfabe, really, is what we would call it in the wrestling business, uh, to try and you know save ourselves. Fa- <sighs> Do you know what I mean, John? I mean, I could read what well, I could pretend to read them out. And then you boys wouldn't get cancelled, and then you could pretend to be listening. John, you can't get cancelled either. You get cancelled, and George Bowie's show's fucked. You need to be there. So that's I'm, so I'm putting a call out to the punters here. Help us clean up our careers. Help mm. us clean up our careers here, because these are going to come back to haunt us one day. Uh, I'm telling you, Grado, these are going to come back to haunt us. That, that is worrying, man. Tell us about fucking you t- the thing you burnt tablet at Halloween and do you know what I mean that's and, boring no aye but that's what we're, we can make it good <laughs> if this keeps going like this it's going to end up being like so I fucking murdered the guy I know flung him into the fucking canal it's going to be like that to be fair someone's been in touch bar test their team emailed us thank you very much for email he says no need to issue the ban on the three week come uh, really, as after Grado's tales of shite so solid they made his nose white, <laughs> his toxic gooch murdering all his underpants, and the rendition of the sexual chocolate theme last week, I doubt they'll be able to jizz for three months, let alone three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous. Oh. It's time to choose our listener of the week, Grado, if you can believe that. Um... Now, who would that be? Well, oh, hey, hold on. Why don't we get to Emma Louise, who did that beautiful drawing? Of course. It's going to be Emma Louise of that Emma effort, Louise. of that gorgeous drawing with a nice bit of lens flare in it as well. Thanks, Emma Louise. You are our listener of the week. And that's it, really, for Wrestling that's Daft. So, you can believe that. Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple or get us in wherever you get your podcasts. Mind if you want more content, you want the video version of the show, get on board patreon.com forward slash wrestling daft. And why not check out our merch at shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash wrestling daft. Grado, what have you got lined up for the weekend? Uh, what am I doing? Oh, I'll be watching the Fat Bar Sunday. Watching the Fat Bar. Um, that's about the best, to be fair. I but, think, uh, right, not to put you on the spot here, but I think you should put in a video asking Rangers <laughs> fans not to, to stay home. <laughs> I kind of feel like you're a quite... No, come on, when it comes to, like, celebrity Rangers fans in the country, 
I think you're quite high up there. You know what I mean? I think you should be doing a wee video. So Drew's doing all the BT. I don't know if you've seen. Oh, the, I've the, seen the, it. The promo. That is good. Eh? This Saturday, it's it's like a wrestling promo. It's what is, have you not seen it? No, I've it's seen like uh, and it's like fucking Judgment Day or something. Like that. He's advertising. It's brilliant, right? It's really good. So let him do. I, I know what you mean, but do you think I maybe can attract all the bangers? No, I'm just saying. I just say I think it would be the responsible thing for you to do, as a you know, as a celebrity Ranger supporter, to do a wee video just saying things like, "Okay, guys, uh, you know, obviously we're all really pleased about winning." They want the to be there. It's a kind of, you know, it's but you know, you should really stay home, uh, and just mm. enjoy it at home in your mum's house, <laughs> you know. I stay. Uh -huh. Just stay alert. So that's it, Grado. We'll enjoy the game at the weekend, the football match. Stay indoors. I'll be watching the Brooklyn Nets, because I'm basketball daft. Check that out on all your podcast providers. And, eh, uh, Grado, get yourself up the road. Well, Rob, I'll let me tell you something right now. Eleven! Eleven! It's yourself, Grado. Hey. Stay safe. Walter. I'll be getting the... Walter! Walter! I won't be vaccinated the next time you see me, but uh, in a couple of shows' time, I'm going to be full of the vaccine and ready to go crazy local. Good luck. Audio Frontier.